In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and with, with your, your spirit. spirit. Just to welcome everyone joining us, seeing Mass uh, through the various media, and as always, love and prayers to, to you, your family, and friends. And so now as we begin to celebrate this mystery of God's love, let us acknowledge our sins and ask our Lord's forgiveness. Lord Jesus, you are mighty God and Prince of Peace. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the Son of God and Son of Mary. Christ, have mercy. Christ, Christ have, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are Word made flesh and splendor of the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you. Let us pray. Grant, almighty God, that we may celebrate with heartfelt devotion these days of joy, which we keep in honor of the risen Lord, and that what we relive in remembrance we may always hold to in what we do. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, for ever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Philip went down to the city of Samaria and proclaimed the Christ to them. 
With one accord, the crowds paid attention to what was said by Philip when they heard it and saw the signs he was doing. For unclean spirits crying out in a loud voice came out of many possessed people, and many paralyzed or crippled people were cured. There was great joy in that city. Now when the apostles in Jerusalem heard that Samaria had accepted the word of God, they sent them Peter and John, who went down and prayed for them, that they might receive the Holy Spirit, for it had not yet fallen upon any of them. They had only been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Then they laid hands on them, and they received the Holy Spirit. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to, to God. God. A reading from the first letter of St. Peter. Beloved, sanctify Christ as Lord in your hearts. Always be ready to give an explanation to anyone who asks you for a reason for your hope, but do it with gentleness and reverence, keeping your conscience clear, so that when you are maligned, those who defame your, your good conduct in Christ may themselves be put to shame. For it is better to suffer for doing good, if that be the will of God, than for doing evil. For Christ also suffered for sins once, the righteous for the sake of the unrighteous, that he might lead you to God. Put to death in the flesh, he was brought to life in the spirit. The word of the Lord. Right. Thanks be, be to God. God.
you and, and with, with your, your spirit. spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, If you love me, you will keep my commandments, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you always, the Spirit of Truth, whom the world cannot accept, because it neither sees nor knows him. But you know him, because he remains with you, and he will be in you. I will not leave you orphans. I will come to you. In a little while, the world will no longer see me, but you will see me because I live and you will live. On that day, you will realize that I am in my Father and you are in me and I in you. Whoever has my commandments and observes them is the one who loves me. And whoever loves me will be loved by my Father, and I will love him and reveal myself to him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus. Jesus Christ. There there are many ways of describing God. In the light of today's scriptures, one of the ways I would describe the Lord is a giver of gifts. And especially in this discourse with Jesus at his, and his disciples at the Last Supper, there are so many gifts that are being revealed. There's the gift of uh, Jesus' love for his disciples as he washes their feet. There's the gift of himself in the Holy Eucharist, where he becomes present to them uh, in his flesh and in his blood. There's also two other gifts that Jesus gives in this passage that we're hearing today, and Jesus links them to each other too. One of those is Jesus says twice, I give you my commandments. Now, a lot of people would like to say, I don't see how the commandments be a gift from God, they're an imposition from God. But we have to understand that what Jesus taught his disciples, what he asked them to do, was because he loved them and he wanted the absolute best for them. It's like a parent. My parents uh, always screamed at me things, don't cross the street without looking both ways. And I remember when I was about eight or nine years old, I was going across the street to the neighbor. It was a very slow street, so I started running out right into the middle of the street, and all of a sudden there was, Aah! as a car put on its screeching brakes, ended up about this far away from me. And all of a sudden I realized why all of those times, don't cross the street without looking both ways. I found out there's a good reason that they kept saying that. There's exactly the same reason that anything the Lord says to us. It's because he wants the best for us. He wants us to have the fullness of life. And Jesus goes on also to talk about another gift, that very powerful gift that we're going to be celebrating in a special way next weekend, the gift of the Holy Spirit at Pentecost. And again, the Holy Spirit is one of those ways of God making his love his grace and his mercy known to us. And just like the Father and like Jesus, the Holy Spirit is a divine person, a real person. It's something that we have a tough time coming to grips with. Uh, Jesus uh, hits the nail on the head in the Last Supper. He says, the world does not see and hear and experience the Holy Spirit in a tangible way. Therefore, it's uh, inclined not to accept him. I can appreciate that because, as I've shared with you many times, my college education started at a science and technology, the science and technology college, RPI, uh, up the road from us. 
And time and time again, it was uh, drilled into us, is that unless you can see it, unless you can examine it with a scientific instrument, it doesn't count. I was grateful many years ago that I heard Father Benedict Rochelle say, is that for us to experience the fullness of God's love and grace, one of the essential requirements is that we be open to mystery, is that we be open to realities that not, cannot be measured with scientific instruments that can be measured nonetheless. And it's in that light that Jesus talks to us in today's gospel. It's important to realize the Holy Spirit is a real person. The Holy Spirit is real and active in the history of the world. The Holy Spirit is real and active in our lives. I think in our own lifetime, one of the most powerful ways was when the Holy Spirit empowered uh, Pope John the XXIII uh, to call that uh, Second Vatican Council. He was elected Pope because the people at that time, the Cardinals, they didn't know how to choose. They'll say, well, let's get Angelo Roncalli. He's an old man. He's only going to be with us a few years. By then, we'll have a clear picture of what God wants for the church. Well, the Lord wasn't willing to wait a few years. This man who only lasted five years was inspired very early on to call this Vatican Council. And he said, breathe new life into the church. The Holy Spirit has continued to do that. And I'm convinced that the Holy Spirit has been very active in the history of our own parish. And here, I hope I'm not gonna get myself in trouble as I share this story with you. But here's what happened a very few years ago. It was in early 2016. I was called to a meeting with a group of diocesan officials that were called the Diocesan Pastoral Planning Committee with the other pastors of uh, uh, Columbia County. And we were told was, here was the plan that we had to be ready to invoke and here we had to find a way of implementing it. It wasn't for us to decide what was gonna happen. All we had to do was to decide how it was gonna be implemented. And I was told that when I retired, Holy Trinity Parish was going to cease to exist. It would be merged with another neighboring parish. One of the neighboring priests would become the pastor. And we had to expect things to kind of really be radically changed. Things as like the number of weekend masses would be reduced. I expect, uh, because maybe the priests would not be living here in Hudson, a uh, distance away, hospital ministry might be reduced. We, we, probably will not have confessions scheduled on a regular basis. I have to say that that really tore me apart. And the worst part at that point was say, you can't tell every, anybody about this except for a few of the inner circle is because it will mess up the, the, the progress. It will poison the well. It will make things go poorly. So here I was, I felt like I was hanging out on the branch. And what could we do? Part of it was uh, prayerfully say, Lord, you've got to help us out of this mess. Now, one of the people that was knowledgeable of this is because he was a part of the pastoral planning team was Mike Van Allen, our young director of liturgy behind us. And I remember one day Michael and I had a, a discussion. I said, well, I said, I don't know what we can do. I said, about the only thing left we've got is prayer. So I said, I'll tell you what. He says, we're going to pray that the Lord will send us the kind of pastor that we need. So I said, the first thing is, let's make a list of the 10 priests in the Diocese of Albany that will be the best pastor for our parish. And it's absolutely true. I'd just been up in Latham a month or so before I said that. For the first time in my life, I heard Father Anthony Barrett address a gathering of the priest and the leadership of the diocese. And I said, this is really a great guy. He's got, he would make a great pastor. I said, so I said, Michael, I said, the first person on that list is Father Anthony Barrett. I said, he would make a wonderful pastor for our parish. I said, now he's in Latham. I said, they've got more talent. They've got more population. They've got more of anything that we have. But I said, you never know. Uh, maybe something will happen that the Lord will send him down to us. And we made lists of other guys that would be good pastors. Again, all of them, they were in solid positions. What were the chances of their coming? But 
I said, we were praying for a miracle, so here was our list of miracles that we wanted. So Michael had came across this novena of St. John Vianney, uh, the, the patron of a parish priest. He said, well, I'll use the novena of St. John Vianney. He said, I'll start praying for this too. And we were praying for it. And of course, we had to pray for it in very vague ways in public is because we weren't allowed to give the people the details that I had been told uh, in private. Now, that was going on for six months. Now, I did not know this. I only knew this later after Father Anthony became pastor. But in July of uh, 2016, Bishop Scharferberger called him into his office and he said, Anthony, he said, I would like you to become uh, diocesan director of prayer and worship. The diocese needs your gifts. And apparently, Father Anthony said, I, he said, I could help you. He says, but there's no way that I can hold down a diocesan office and look after a parish with over 2,700 families and take care of both by myself. He said, something else would have to be in place. Bishop Schaufenberger, he says, well, he said, I'll tell you. In a few months, he said, when Beth is going to be retiring from uh, Holy Trinity Parish in Hudson. It's a much smaller parish than uh, your, your parish in Latham. And he says, I think you could look after the parish and you could take care of the diocesan job too, if you're willing to take it. Father Anthony said he would pray about it and eventually told Bishop Scharfenberger that he would do it. Now, when he met with Bishop Scharfenberger telling him to do it, Bishop Scharfenberger said, well, he said, I better called in the diocesan pastoral planners, those team that a few months ago had told me all of these dire things that were going to be happening to our parish. And Bishop Schaufenberger said, well, he said, I want to tell you about uh, what's going to be happening in, in Hudson uh, in a very short time. And apparently they said, well, Bishop Schaufenberger, we already have a plan for Hudson. Bishop Schaufenberger said this, and I'm convinced it's the Holy Spirit he says, cancel that plan. He says, I have another plan for you. He says, in that plan, he says, Father Anthony Barrett will go to Hudson, be pastor of that parish, and also serve the diocese, diocese as director of prayer and worship. And I guess they were stunned because it's the first time a bishop ever told them that their plans had to change, but it did change. And we've ended up with an incredible situation it's a parish that has continued to grow in so many different ways. And I'm absolutely convinced it was the grace of the Holy Spirit. All that time, nobody ever said, oh, look, there's the Holy Spirit doing this and that. We never saw the Holy Spirit. We never had anything. But we ended up with incredible graces and blessings. So when I tell you, the Holy Spirit is alive, the Holy Spirit is working the world, and the Holy Spirit is working our parish. I absolutely believe it. Dear friends, let us now say together the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried, he descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty, from there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Filled with God's gifts, let us now place our prayers and petitions before him. For the church, formed in the spirit as the body of Christ, may God graciously grant us his grace as we proclaim the good news. 
Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For world leaders, may the good news of the gospel guide their actions and laws. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For those who are sick or anxious and those who care for them, may they experience the comfort and strength of our loving God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For all who serve in the military, may they be protected and sustained by God's gracious presence. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For all those who await with eager expectation the sacraments of initiation, may the Holy Spirit continue to strengthen them in faith. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For all for whom we offer for this Mass intentions, and in particular for Edith Cruce, Harold and Anna Rowan, Mary Craner, Juanita Medizabel, the deceased members of the Catholic Daughters Court Columbia 248, Stephen and Casimira Jaquila, Roger Marvin, and Maria Espinol. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. I would ask everyone's prayers, especially in this week, for our diaconate candidates. The diaconate ordination would have taken place today. Um, please, God, be in September now. Please do keep them, including, of course, members of our own parish and those who've been with us uh, in your prayers. And I think of those words, uh, that the Lord may continue to bless them, and as the bishop will say to them, may God, who has begun the good work in you, bring it to fulfillment. For this intention, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. And we pause for a moment of quiet prayer, laying before our Lord any other more personal prayers or needs. God our Father, we ask you to hear our prayers. You fill us with your many gifts. May we use those gifts wisely and well in love and service of you and neighbor through Christ our Lord. Amen. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours 
may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord, Lord accept the sacrifice in your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. May our prayers rise up to you, O Lord, together with the sacrificial offerings, so that, purified by your graciousness, we may be conformed to the mysteries of your mighty love, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. He never ceases to offer himself for us, but defends us and ever pleads our cause before you. He is the sacrificial victim who dies no more, the lamb once slain who lives forever. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, Every land, every people exalts in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Indeed, holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, save us, save the world. For by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. 
Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Edward, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you, in your compassion, O merciful Father, and gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom, there we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Saviour's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign for ever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. 
Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Together now, we enter into a spiritual communion with the Lord. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who restore us to eternal life in the resurrection of Christ, increase in us, we pray, the fruits of this Paschal Sacrament, and pour into our hearts the strength of this saving food. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. As always, love and prayers to everybody um, in this week ahead. Uh, may we indeed have those many gifts of the um, Holy Spirit as we prepare for Pentecost, which will be at the end of the month in two weeks' time very soon. Um, just a couple of announcements to make. As I mentioned, please do keep our diaconate candidates uh, in your prayers. Of course, we think of Dan and Stephen from our parish, Ron, who was with us. Uh, on placement. Uh, again, the ordination for many of them would have been um, this weekend, in fact. Uh, Stephen will be ordained out in Rome, please God, in October. So it's very tough for them, you know, preparing all those years for that date, um, but I'm sure they're patiently waiting. So please do keep them and also our priesthood uh, a candidate in your prayers too. Uh, I mentioned in our video message, lots of things have been going on uh, in the church. The, the roof, please God, is secure, especially with those thunderstorms rolling in. Um, I was very glad <laughs> that the roof, please God, is in, in good shape now. That was quite a big project, of course. Um, our reigniting our faith. Folks have asked about that. Uh, we are, of course, moving ahead. There's a stop on any construction, as you know. Uh, once things reopen, we're, we're kind of ready to go with a number of those, those projects. So, just to reassure everyone of that, plenty of those sort of, I guess, nuts and bolts things um, going on too. So, and as always, to thank you for your prayers and, and uh, of course, generosity. Um, that's just so wonderful. Um, I was going to tease uh, Father Bath and Michael so I can say, so you are responsible for, for we can blame Father Bath for me uh, being here and Michael. Um, but that's so true, especially in our difficult time, folks, the power 
of prayer, the power of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is such a practical uh, person in the Trinity uh, in many ways, so we just ask for that inspiration uh, in the week ahead as we get towards Pentecost at the end of the month. May it be a blessed week for you. One last thing. Uh, this Thursday is the Ascension, um, normally a holy day of obligation, of course, with the suspension of that and no public masses. So we will be, as always, having the Mass. It will be on the website um, for Ascension Thursday. The Lord be with you. And, and with, with your, your spirit. spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go and announce the Gospel of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, God. to God. We say now our prayer to Saint Michael the Archangel. Saint Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen.